open for our standard opens, probably the most popular deck in the majority of day twos. Also made the finals of Grand Prix Memphis in the hands of Ben Stark. He moved up to a four, four, full four copies of Outpost Siege. Andrew only playing two copies, but the elements are still there. A lot of red removal backed up by Chain of the Rocks and just a quality curve of creatures. All right, well, we are underway. This is game three between the two of them. It means they will be sideboarded. Glare of Heresy is likely to come in on both sides of the board. Andrew's on the play, however. He starts out with a turn two Seeker of the Way as the first creature here. And a problem for Aaron in this matchup is just his mana. You know, he's got a lot of pain lands, a lot of copies of mana confluence, and uh, those extra points of damage against a deck with Stoke the Flames and so forth can really add up. Yeah, well, he does have a two drop to trade with the Seeker right now. It's going to be Heir of the Wilds on his side. You're absolutely right, though. I'm not sure Aaron has all of his colors put together right now. He may be light on lands. We'll see if he gets punished for it. Back over on Winslow's side, he does have removal, it looks like, for the air. Soulfire Grandmaster and Lightning Strike among his options. Now, Aaron, you know, by his standards, kind of coloring inside the lines this weekend, really only a three-color deck. Yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely right, only three colors. That said, though, the color events are still very high, and you see that a lot of times in Nobs on Aggro. Fleece Main Lion and Rakshasa Death Dealer. And that Gather Courage is exactly the exchange I was talking about there. That's Air, That's Andrew's third turn. Yeah, Lightning Strike on the Air of the Wilds, hope to kill it, but Gather Courage saves it. Still, though, three lifelink comes across. But a great exchange for Aaron, especially when you consider that he didn't have... He's, he's light on lands this game. It's very hard in beatdown mirror matches, or it can be very hard, to catch up when you're on the draw. And that play right there from Aaron is now allowing him to catch up on the draw. Yeah, Gather Courage to save his air, untaps, does draw Sandstep Citadel for the turn, so he has land three, plays a second copy of Air of the Wilds, and now just opts not to attack. He'll go ahead and pass. It seems like he wants to settle into a trade and control game. Exactly. He doesn't want to take another hit here, because if, if he attacks back and Andrew plays a spell to remove the untapped air, well, the damage that the initial air dealt isn't really worth very much because of the lifelink, so... I think that it's fine to hold back on defense, both to preserve Aaron's light total, because specifically the threat seeker of the way, not really conducive to Aaron trying to damage race. And look at Aaron. He, it does have some larger cards to set up for. It looks like he has a Lanoir Wastes and a Soren Solemn Visitor in hand. Seeker of the way trades away with one of the heirs, and Andrew has a replacement seeker. Andrew with no fourth land himself. No one Aaron's side. Draw for the turn was Sandstep Citadel, so he has two lands and a Soren. One other spell, I believe. Little light on action. Yeah, well, he's going to need to get some mileage out of that Soren then, if he's light on action, I think. Just play Sandstep Citadel and passes. Again, not in a position to really damage Ray, so just trying to play as much defense as possible. Hope that he can deploy Stor Soren on a stable board and go from there. Yeah, it looks like his last card is a one of, is a one of copy of Murderous Cut. And this may be seeing whether it's put to the test. Andrew will taps out for Goblin Rabble Master. Aaron does have enough mana to cast Murderous Cut, and he'll do just that. Takes down the Goblin. I believe that was actually a copy of Bio Blight. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, he took did. a point off the Caves of Coilos and... Right. And we see Soren Solemn Visitor not well set up by Aaron. He then trades away the Seeker with the Air of the Wilds and then sets up an empty board where he can play Soren minus two onto it. There's no guarantee this is good enough to win the game. You know, at the end of the day, it's just a 2 2 flyer if Aaron can remove the Soren. But this is really the best of what Aaron's hand allowed him to do. Yeah, I mean, it does. He's going to get two cards for the Soren. Very few ways in Andrew's deck to just simply kill Soren with haste this turn. So you'd like to have to spend a spell doing it or give Aaron a second activation. And we see that. Third Seeker of the way for Andrew. And now a Siege Rhino off the top for Aaron, and this is a great turn. I mean, Siege Rhino, basic, is one of the best reasons to play Obzon really in any form, whether it's mid-range, control, or aggro. Well, it allows him to play it, which is already good. And then it's a great blocker to protect Soren. I think Aaron this turn will likely play the Siege Rhino plus the Soren. That moves up to sure. three. Attack for three points of lifelink with the token. And then have a pretty well-protected Soren. Looks like that'll be just it. So Siege Rhino is the play. So life throws will be evened up at 19 because it drains for three. 
Now, the problem with the line of play that I suggested was that if Andrew has chained the rocks, then Soren's dead, your Siege Rhino's dead, and you don't have a lot going on. So the question, I guess, is whether or not Aaron sends the vampire token. Yep. Aaron's last card, Lanwar Wastes. So what's on the table is what you see is what he has. And yeah, does not want to get chained to the rocks out. He pluses Thorn, but leaves both creatures back to defend. Very conservative line of play. Yeah, this is the second time we've seen Aaron opt for pretty conservative lines here. Um, in this matchup, do, do you feel like, is he the slower deck of the two? They are both aggro. Well, I, I think the thing here is that Aaron needs time to draw out of this because I think he suspects Andrew's hand is just spells. And if he tries to play a short game, the fact that Aaron has nothing going on and Andrew probably has gas, means that Aaron's dupe. So I think he's just trying to err on the side of caution to just give himself more draw steps to find something of substance. He's got a lot of power in his deck, so it's just an issue of, of finding it, you know? Yeah, I remember Andrew with a fair number of ways to get rid of that Siege Rhino. You talked about Chain to the Rocks. He also plays cards like Valorous Stance. We'll see if he has any of those answers. It looks like it's Glare of Heresy out of the sideboard. And we'll see which one he goes at. He'll actually Glare the Soren. Okay. And then play Soulfire Grandmaster and pass it back. A lot of lifelink on Andrew's side of the board. And for Aaron, that's the activated ability on Soulfire Grandmaster eventually does become a concern. Uh, we're can't kill we're it. hitting there now. I, if Andrew has another land, for example, he starts getting access to Wild Slash with buyback, which is great in the spot, can take care of the vampire token, uh, and maybe set you up for secret way to start making some attacks. Yeah, the, the scary part for Aaron is that you see right now he's swung with the Vampire Token is that because of the lifelink on Andrew's side of the board, Aaron can't really swing Siege Rhino, and he's only dealing two damage a turn. So Andrew goes to 17 that turn, but that's a long ways away from a point where Andrew needs to be concerned. Exactly, yeah. The, the lifelink here gives Andrew a lot of flexibility in trying to set up Soulfire Grandmaster or just playing, you know, he, he can be pretty fluid with his game plan here. If he wants to go on the aggressive, he can, and if he wants to just... Settle back and let Soulfire Grandmaster do its thing. He has access to that line of play as well. Yeah. Another three creature added to the board for Andrew. This time it's Goblin Rabble Master. Makes a, go makes a token. Token will swing. We'll see if anybody else joins in. And yeah, Andrew's going to go ahead and send the team. Well, Soulfire, Aaron recognizing, I think, the lake and potential Soulfire Grandmaster. He's going to try to take that out with Siege Rhino. It's a very aggressive attack from Andrew. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what the plan here is from Andrew's side, as he's in a great position to just set up a powerful board. I don't mind playing the Rabble Master and just swinging with the token. I just don't think there's a lot to be gained by making an Alpha Strike at this stage. Well, three damage will come across. That'll put Aaron down to 16, but Soulfire Grandmaster will, will hit the graveyard there. Andrew will gain three, or rather gain two. And yeah, no follow-up play. That seems like a very expensive three damage you just dealt. And now Andrew can sit back, uh, Aaron, excuse me, can sit back with both of his creatures, which is what he does here, and say, all right, well, if you want to make that kind of attack, I'll really set up on defense, make that hard to do. This is a spot where if Andrew has Chain of the Rocks, though, it's still, it's still gravy. It's still right. super good for him. So back over to Andrew. So Seeker of the Way, Goblin Rabble Master, and Goblin Token on Andrew's side. He has 19 life. Aaron Barich, 16, with just a Siege Rhino and Vampire Token. Siege Rhino currently holding the fort down. None of Andrew's creatures can swing through it. But Andrew has so many more creatures that Aaron is, is just pretty conservative here, not even swinging with the Vampire. You see another goblin made by Rabble Master, and Seeker of the Way and Rabble Master will both attack. Well, I think th this this block's pretty straightforward here. Let's see what trick you have. Maybe he loses one of the creatures, but it's unlikely he loses both. Yeah, Sh Vampire is in front of is in front of the Goblin Token, Rhino in front of Seeker of the Way, and Andrew's willing to try the two for one to get rid of Siege Rhino. He'll Wild Slash the Siege Rhino. That prowesses the Seeker to a three three. That will get five damage onto the Siege Rhino. Andrew gains three. But the Goblin goes down, the Seeker goes down, Wild Slash out of Andrew's hand, and all of that just for the Siege Rhino. Yep. And now Aaron with access to a lot of good draws. If he picks up a kill spell for the Rabble Master, that's great. Any of his large threats, particularly Siege Rhino, they're going to be really good here. Yeah, he does, have, he does even play one copy of Tassiger the Golden Fang in his deck. Yeah, so a lot of huge draws. 
A little bit behind on the board right now, a little bit behind in the damage race, but he can pick it up very easily. Right now, Goblin Token is just attacking into Aaron's creatures, and it is Bio Blight from Aaron. So now Goblin Rabble Master is off the board. 2-2 Two -two staring at a 1-1. One -one. Aaron can decide to push this race if he wants to. We'll see if it's if he still stays with his conservative lines, whether he starts trading damage. It looks like answer's no. He'll just continue to stay even. Draws Obs on Charm for the turn. And that's one of those big draws. I, I would imagine this is going to be the draw two mode. He's got enough life to play with here. Board looks stable enough to do this. Yeah, we'll go down to 13 and draws two. <laughs> it's another land in an Obs on Charm. I mean, not great, but... Uh, you know, Aaron still can do the same thing here. Right, right back. He'll probably hold off for one turn in case some big threat comes up that he wants to use the Obs on Charm on, but... Sure, and I mean, out of Red White Aggro, there aren't that many creatures that you can actually exile with it. No, not a lot. There's some copies of Bermaz. It's a short list, but he probably doesn't find a follow-up play here with the Obs on Charm if he draws two, so might as well. And here's a dangerous one, though. Storm Breath Dragon on Andrew Winslow's side. That's a creature with power three or greater, but it also has protection from white, so Obs on Charm won't be much help. Aaron can block and put 1-1 one -one counters on his Vampire to trade here. And we'll see if he does that. It looks like he's going to go down to 11 off fetch lands. That suggests he's going to draw cards, I think. Yep. Wants to get these lands out of his deck. He's playing with a lot of fire, though. That's a lot of life points to get rid of. It's true, but he still has some big draws that he can pick up here. Yeah, so Obs on Charm puts two counters on the Vampire, and Vampire will trade with Storm Breath Dragon. And I thought that Andrew's attack there with the token was a little bit aggressive, but uh, against Obs on Charm, it was actually a free point of damage. Exactly. Draw for the turn from Aaron is Glare of Heresy. He's currently at 10. Now nine from the Goblin token. Two cards in Andrew's hand. Aaron has done a great job of getting free resources, but he is still right now at nine lands to five. He just seems to be getting bullied by the, by the fact that Andrew has drawn more spells. Pretty much, yeah. Now Aaron's hand, Glare of Heresy, and Gather Courage. Nothing to be done with either of them. Yeah, there's there are a couple cards in Aaron's deck that can really capitalize on this wealth of lands. Rakshasa, the Death Dealer, and Tassiger, the Golden Fang, come to mind. Yeah, but these chip shots they had taken from the token against Red White Aggro would stoke the flames and Lightning Strike. Yeah, he can't be happy about that. Down to seven, Aaron, another land draw. He'll just keep passing this. This goblin, Aaron was at 11. It's, it's chipping one at yep. a time. Down to six. Now, Andrew hasn't drawn much either, to be fair. And Aaron finally with a creature. It's Anafenza the foremost. He'll go ahead and play that. That'll be a blocker. He does have Glare and Gather Courage to possibly protect it. We'll see if Andrew has had a copy of Chain to the Rocks or if it's just burn spells. And right now, nothing. He'll pass back the turn. Maybe okay. Aaron has stabilized. And that the second copy of Anafenza, Perfect. the next draw. It's <laughs> just what he wants Perfect. to see. Perfect. I mean, he gets to play a little offense, defense for one turn, you know? I'll give it. Three mana, discard a card. Give target creature vigilance till end of turn. Yep. It's, mm. it's actually better than the other cards that are in his hand right now, so. <laughs> you can see it on Aaron's <laughs> face. He's not. <laughs> Just passes back. He can't really attack here without having a blocker. And now this will be problematic. Looks like Hordling Outburst was the draw from Andrew. That's really bad news here. Uh, you know, Aaron's hand, not really equipped to handle tokens. And Both his copies of Bioblade have already been cast this game. Yeah. These tokens might allow a Andrew to crawl across the finish line even if he doesn't have any more action. Aaron Sandsteps Citadel the draw. He has really just been missing that last some action on these draws. Yeah, I mean, any of his big draws would have been good here, but Stormbreath Dragon required too much of Aaron's resources, and now... Uh, yeah, he would have loved to have been able, had the freedom to draw two off that Obzod Charm. Yeah. And four tokens in play. They're going to swing. One goes into the Anafenza. Three come across. Aaron down to three. And no lethal burn spell just yet. This is excruciating, too, because Andrew hasn't killed him. I'm sure Aaron can't believe he's still alive and draws yet another one. I land. mean, if you look at it, these goblins will deal two and then one over the next two <laughs> turns. Aaron goes down to one. Do we see that here. Another draw. It's another copy of Glare of Heresy. <laughs> and... Uh, that's going to be it. This yep. swing will just be lethal. Yeah, talk about crawling across the finish line. Yep. Just barely makes it. N not an impressive draw for either of them. 
And Aaron's going to go ahead and he'll go out in style. He'll pump Andrews on block to 1-1. And there you have it. Andrew Winslow takes game three over Aaron Barich. Yeah, it's just couldn't find a, a good piece of action there. That's all it was. Had a lot of draw steps to find it, but could not find something like Siege Rhino or even, even a Nana Penza earlier on in the game would have been a big deal. And I mean, if you've... And when you talk about draws, though, you have to look at Andrew. It's not like he drew anything either, yeah, as far no, as we could tell. It, it was that that one goblin just went the distance. I'm surprised the game went on for as long as it did. <laughs> yeah. So there's, so red white aggro two to one. The winner over Aaron Barrett's Abzan aggro. And 